Hey folks, how you doing? Dave McRae here. You guys notice anything different? Do I look, uh, do I look more clear than I normally do, say, from my past videos? I'm using a different camera today. Uh, ordinarily I use my phone to shoot my videos. I could use, like, I have a couple of DSLRs that I could use as well. But, uh, you know, the DSLRs, you got to play around with the settings and the exposure and all that kind of stuff. And I just don't want to be bothered to do that because for me, because I'm so busy, time is of the essence. So if I can just turn something on and go, it's much more advantageous for me. Now, of course, if I was shooting a movie, I would shoot them on my DSLRs or I would rent higher end cameras and all that kind of stuff. Um, but for this purpose, yeah, I think it serves it. I think it serves a purpose. Well, a very high end webcam is what I'm using. So, uh, I think, uh, I think it's all right. We'll see how this works. I mean, maybe the difference is marginal, but eh, I don't know. We'll see. I also got my microphone in the shot here. I've always had my microphone, um, of course, obviously, uh, but it's just, uh, it's always been off to the right hand side of the frame, my right, your left. You probably have seen it in some of my past videos, just kind of on the edge of the frame. But today I thought I would bring it into the shot because it's a nice visual aesthetic. Um, yeah, looks all right. Now this is not the microphone I use for my voiceover work. This is just, I just use this for YouTube. I have a professional voiceover booth over there where I have all my high end gear and my mics and all that kind of jazz. And that's where I do all my voiceover work. But for this, it's attached to a boom arm, which attaches to my desk. Uh, and it, it works fine. It's, uh, it's some good stuff. So, uh, yeah. So yeah, comment below and let me know what you guys think of this. If it's all right. Uh, like again, maybe the difference is marginal. It's not that big of a deal, but, uh, maybe we'll go with this. I did do a test where I had my glasses on, but there's quite the glare on my glasses as you can see. So I like wearing my glasses because then I can read the screen, but maybe I'll, I'll, I'll take them off. And if I need to put them on to read something, I'll, that's when I'll, I'll put them on or maybe Maybe I'll figure something out. Um, I do want to say that some news is coming out of CinemaCon today that apparently, this is true, apparently the teaser trailer has been seen. It was dropped at CinemaCon today. Now, CinemaCon takes place in Las Vegas. The general public cannot attend that. That is essentially a trade show for industry professionals, essentially, okay? And uh, what you get there is, uh, you know, movies that are coming out. Um, a lot of the big wigs attend these things to showcase to, you know, a lot of theater and industry professionals what's coming out, what's coming up, all that kind of shit and all that kind of jazz. And Jamie Lee Curtis attended with uh, Jason Blum, and I believe it was today, Jamie Lee Curtis was on stage talking about the new Halloween movie and they showed the teaser trailer to a select audience. So we know that the teaser trailer is coming soon. Now, for a long time, probably, well, not a long time, but for the last couple of months, I've been saying that, um, I guess sort of, my predictions video was uploaded, what, the in February, towards the end of February? In and around that time, maybe the beginning of March, I said, based on what I'm seeing, based on the momentum of the pre-production, production, post-production, post marketing, I think we're probably going to get our first teaser trailer. What did I say? May or June. That's what I said. Well, now it's looking like it could be, well, it's the 25th of April today, so we're essentially six days away from May, and we could get it any day now, which is pretty close to May. But if we don't get it within the next week, I think we're going to get it in May. Um, when I'm not entirely sure, maybe May 19th, right? Five months exactly away from the uh, release date. Maybe they'll start dropping things on the 19th of every month. Who knows? That's pure speculation. But there's no doubt that we're probably going to get it uh, very soon. Now, for all of you guys out there who uh, think the trailer is actually going to drop after San Diego Comic-Con instead, um, you could be right. And the reason why a lot of people think that is because if you go to the Trick or Treat Studios website, and for those of you who don't know, Trick or Treat Studios recently became the official license for the new Michael Myers mask from this movie. Um, on their website, it says, by request of the licensor, we cannot show pictures of the mask until July 23rd, which coincidentally is the day after the SDCC, the San Diego Comic-Con, comes to an end. San Diego Comic-Con this year is from July 19th to the 22nd. So that is a really good assumption. Um, that is certainly an assumption uh, founded on high probability because of that information. However, it's important to keep in mind 
made that this all depends on how much of the mask uh, was in that trailer that dropped today at CinemaCon. But it's also important to remember that what they showed at CinemaCon today, if they showed the mask heavily, it's important to keep in mind that some of those things might be altered or removed for a general audience teaser release a few weeks later. That's entirely possible, okay? But it's sort of like, you know, what they showed to that audience because it's special, right? They want to show, you know, what this looks like. And, you know, there's a lot of industry professionals there, a lot of people that matter in terms of the industry. Not that the public doesn't matter, but I think you know what I'm trying to say. So it's entirely possible that we still could get a teaser trailer earlier than San Diego Comic-Con. And if they did show the mask heavily in the trailer that dropped today at CinemaCon, those moments might be removed. So we might just get glimpses. Whereas come San Diego Comic-Con, because it's one of the biggest conventions in the world for this kind of thing, that's where we're going to get our first general public look at the mask. So it's important to keep that in mind. So I'm going to stick to my guns and say, I think we're going to get something a bit sooner. Uh, so this story, of course, has been picked up by several reputable sources, obviously, one of them including Variety. And this is uh, what Variety had to say about that. So um, this is Variety here. They say... Here is the uh, headline, Halloween footage debuts at CinemaCon. Jamie Lee Curtis promises it's hella scary. <laughs> well, we'll see, Jamie. We will see. Um, and of course, uh, below that, this is what uh, Variety had to say. Jamie Lee Curtis promised theater owners at CinemaCon that Halloween, the latest film in the venerable horror franchise, will be hella scary. Based on footage that debuted at the annual exhibition industry trade show on Wednesday, Halloween more than delivers on the scares, eliciting audible shrieks from the audience in the Caesars Palace Auditorium. Quote, it will scare the living shit out of you, said Curtis shortly before footage unspooled. In fact, Michael Myers' return was so chilling that Kevin Hart, on hand to present a trailer from Night School, immediately after the Halloween trailer dropped, said he was still shaking. Yo, is he here? Is Jason here? <sighs> Somebody teach this guy about Michael Myers, please. Anyway, Curtis said it meant a great deal to return to the role of Laurie Strode, a part that made her an iconic scream queen and put her on Hollywood's A-list when the first film debuted in 1978. So of course, this is coming from a very reputable source, Variety. Now, let's move over to uh, another website that I haven't heard about yet, so I don't know how reputable these guys are. Had this been the only source and had Variety not picked it up and a couple of other reputable sources, I probably wouldn't be doing this video. Um, because I don't know, I'm not too familiar with the website infamoushorror.com. I'm not saying they're not good. I'm just saying this is my first introduction to them. However, this is what was on their website. Very interesting indeed. Today at CinemaCon, Jason Blum from Blumhouse and Jamie Lee Curtis were there to talk about Halloween. They also presented the first trailer, so we know that it is almost here. Since a teaser trailer has been shown today, let's hope that this teaser will be leaked ASAP. We are updating you as soon as we get the trailer. Well, let's hope that the trailer is not leaked. Um, I hope that it's released officially, and maybe I have those kind of standards because I, you know, am an artist and work in the industry, but I certainly don't want it to be leaked unnecessarily, but we know it's coming. And there is an image right there, folks, of Jamie Lee Curtis on stage at CinemaCon talking to a select audience about, obviously, Halloween 2018, and I'm sure they showed the teaser trailer probably shortly after that. And here is an update from, uh, I'm not familiar with who this guy is, but I just started following him on Twitter because I thought, oh, he might be a good source to uh, keep in mind for these kinds of things. So Eric Vespi, Vespa, Vespi, am I saying that right? I don't know, probably not. I probably butchered it. Um, hello, how you doing? Anyways, according to his Twitter account, he is senior entertainment writer for The No at Rooster Teeth, formerly Quint of Ain't It Cool News, movie friend, geek, and man of the world, apparently. And of course, his email address is there, which I uh, won't say, but uh, you can go to his Twitter account and find it, I guess. Um, so yeah, it, it would not surprise me if he was in attendance um, uh, at CinemaCon, being that uh, he is involved in the industry um, as a critic at this level. So um, I, you know, you, you know, you take everything with 
with a grain of salt, of course, but uh, nonetheless, I think the probability, uh, of course, now that Variety has picked up uh, the story as well, that there's a lot of weight behind these claims. And this is what he had to say. Lori is with her daughter and young granddaughter Halloween night 2018. She says Lori has turned into a warrior, hell-bent on protecting her family and determined to keep Michael locked up forever. Ooh, looks like another one of my predictions is coming true. First footage of Halloween looks great. New story is that after he was shot by Loomis, Michael was recommitted and Lori has been preparing in case he ever breaks out. So according to this source, anyway, it looks like my prediction that he will uh, have been locked up for the last 40 years after the events of the 1978 massacre um, from the first film, that is, uh, uh, is coming true. And of course, as I said in my predictions video back in February, there's only one of two ways that you can do it. He's either locked locked up again, or he's nowhere to be seen for the last 40 years. And I said to you guys that I don't think they're going to go that route because just locking him up again avoids all of the questions that are going to come out if you just have him disappear into the ether, which is where has he been for 40 years? Why is he coming back now? How is he eating? How is he fucking taking a shit? You know, nobody's seen this guy walking around for 40 years, you know, and he's dressed, you know, and he returns in the same mask and in the same, you know, jumpsuit. To avoid all those questions, they just thought, you know what, let's lock him up again. So whether you like that or not, that's another story, but it looks like that's what they're, they they have done here and they're going with, which is basically what I thought they were going to do. Uh, he also says here, uh, some teenagers were talking amongst each other. Now, again, he's talking about what he saw in the teaser. Some teenagers were talking amongst each other. Wasn't it her brother that killed all those people? It wasn't her brother. That's something people made up. So yeah, bye-bye sequel storyline. So obviously we see some dialogue and some exposition uh, with some teenagers talking about um, uh, the idea that, uh, you know, wasn't that her brother or blah, blah, blah? No, that was just a made-up thing, which they didn't have to do because the brother-sister uh, story angle, TV version of the original Halloween aside, if you just watch the theatrical version, which is the real canon version, um, there was no mention of, uh, Michael and Lori being siblings. So this is unnecessary. Really? This is more done for all those fans who are going to be confused. They have a moment of dialogue where kids are going to be like, Hey, weren't they brother and sister? And then somebody's like, no, that was just made up. And then the story moves on. So that's for all the people out there that are, that are inevitably going to be confused. Like, weren't they brother and sister? But from a creative narrative standpoint, they didn't have to do that because that story angle, the brother, sister angle wasn't mentioned until Halloween 2. So um, they didn't have to do that. Again, the TV version of Halloween, the original aside, okay? I know they alluded to the potentiality of that in the... Um in the TV version of Halloween, but I'm talking about the theatrical cut, which is canon. So they didn't have, that is purely for people who are going to be confused. Um, I don't know if I was doing it, if I would have done that, I, but maybe they felt they had to. And then of course, uh, scrolling along here, there was a shot of Myers post breakout, tormenting a girl in a bathroom stall. His hand goes over the door and drops a dozen bloody teeth on the floor. They're not messing around with this one. It's great to see the mask back in action. Also, Lori is never once shown as scared in the footage we saw. She's a woman on a mission, just as much a hunter as Michael. Love the take. So if that's true, that sort of lines up with my prediction in terms of the kind of person Lori is. Now, we all assumed that she was probably going to be a little more badass in this movie. And I predicted that maybe she might be struggling with some PTSD, leftover, um, you know, residual PTSD from uh, 40 years earlier. Um, and that has sort of propelled her to make her very strong and sort of maybe almost too overbearing for her daughter and for her granddaughter. Her daughter and her granddaughter may Maybe of the mindset of like, mom, it's been 40 years. He's locked up. Don't worry about it. But now that Dr. Loomis has died, maybe now she's like, oh, hang on a sec here. You know, because, you know, Dr. Loomis was like the only one that was like, no, you've got to keep him in the book. And now that there's another doctor there, he's sort of taken on the role as Loomis. But maybe, you know, he's not quite up to speed and all that kind of shit. And it's entirely possible that it could be played the other way, that the granddaughter and the daughter are totally 
totally in line with, you know, the character of Lori uh, Strode and, and they agree and they're all on the same page, but that's not very interesting. Uh, so I, you know, I would imagine that somewhere along the line, there's going to be some sort of internal conflict in their relationship in terms of, you know, grandma, he's been locked up. Don't worry about it. Mom, he's been locked up. Don't worry about it. Or somebody doesn't know, you know, the fine details of something. And then they come to find it. There has to be something like that because if they're all on the same page going in the same direction for the entire movie, it's not particularly interesting from a relationship standpoint in terms of their character development. So, um, I would imagine that you're probably going to see something like that. But, uh, but in terms of Laurie Strode, yeah, she's cocked and loaded and ready to go, uh, far more than she was in Halloween H2O. Halloween H2O, she was sort of, she became that person towards the end of the film, you know, my God, you know, she became that person. But for the vast majority of the film, she was very scared looking over her shoulder. She essentially, you know, was on the run for 20 years where this time, no, she hasn't been running. She's been waiting. And that, uh, that's going to be a nice contrast to what we saw in 1998. Now, I also read additional information, uh, on a link from Blumhouse's Facebook page, which took me to the website birthmoviesdeath.com. Uh, <laughs> Never heard of them, but I would imagine that the, the information in this article would be reputable or it wouldn't be linked to Blumhouse's Facebook page. But again, you know, I mean, viewer discretion, right? Um, that being said, this is what, uh, this is what was said here in this article. Some more details about the trailer that dropped today at CinemaCon. It says the trailer opens with a pair of researchers, perhaps something like that, entering an open air courtyard in a mental institution. We quickly realize that they're there to see Michael Myers, who's positioned at the center of the court. Yard. One of the two retrieves the famous Michael Myers mask from his bag and holds it out to the looming killer. Now, remember in my predictions video back in February, I said, I had a feeling, I said that I think this mask is probably going to be locked up in some sort of evidence locker or, you know, something to that effect for 40 years. And maybe they do go in and retrieve it for various reasons, uh, maybe perhaps part of Michael's uh, therapy. Uh, who knows? But uh, definitely that was my prediction. So, um, I don't know could be on track for that one too. I've got something I think you'd like to see. The score intensifies over quick shots of the drooling, gibbering patient surrounding Myers and a barking guard dog. And then, boom, we hear that old familiar John Carpenter score. Curtis's Laurie Strode is front and center in this footage. This is an older, meaner, wearier Laurie Strode than we've ever seen. Now living in a house out in the middle of nowhere, complete with a mannequin for target practice set up out back. Laurie seems to have spent the past four decades preparing for her next encounter with Michael Myers. And oh boy, does she look ready for it. It's impossible to recall the trailer beat for beat, but some of the highlights included a scene wherein Myers tracks a woman to a bathroom stall. The scene that I just read to you a few moments ago, reaches one bloody hand over the door and drops a handful of teeth onto the ground. A quick dialogue exchange that casually reconfigures Halloween franchise mythology. You'll know when it happens, which is probably referring to the brother-sister angle. Shots of Myers stalking a neighborhood on Halloween, slashing his way through a number of houses, while Lori screams at crowds of trick-or-treaters to get to safety. One particularly great moment was an exchange between Curtis and Will Patton's sheriff. Lori tells the cop, I've prayed every night that he'd escape. And the sheriff says, why on earth would you do that? And Lori says, so I could kill him. I confess to you that I may have cheered. So there you have it, folks. Potentially more information coming from the teaser trailer that dropped today at CinemaCon. <laughs> Comment below and let me know your thoughts on this. What do you guys think? My name's Dave McRae. If you want to follow me on Facebook, you can at facebook.com slash many things Dave McRae. McRae is M-C-R-A-E. Facebook.com slash many things Dave McRae. That's where you can follow me in the meantime and in between time when I'm not posting here. That's where I tend to post. There is a link in the description for you uh, to click if you want to do that. So yeah, comment below and let me know. Really interesting stuff. Anyways, comment below and let me know your thoughts. I would love to know. Also, so I have another video coming very shortly where I talk about trailer reactions. I plan on doing a trailer reaction for this video, but I'll talk more about that in the video coming very soon. So, uh, yeah, I'll talk to you guys soon. Oh shit. That's like 3d. Holy shit. Yeah. Davis 3d baby. McCray is in 3d. Put those glasses on folks. Cheers.